Let's go down here, guys. Uh, figured I'd give you a quick new demonstration of the updated ringer and its capabilities. So, for those who don't know, the ringer is a super advanced dual ringer circuit that also gives off small amounts of wireless power due to the exotic rod it's constructed on that has trace amounts of met glass in it. Here's a good look at it. Here's a good look underneath it. So, there's the rod it's wound on. And we will be running it off of a 9 volt battery. You don't want to run it off of anything higher than 9 volts. Here's what it can do. We will power up a 40 watt light bulb to half intensity with the ringer. And this thing can be used to charge a large capacitor bank, pulse discharge it, charge 12 volt batteries after it goes through a rectifier. You can do whatever your imagination is with this thing. So we will turn it on. I'm showing you I can lift everything up. There's nothing hidden anywhere. Everything can move. This can completely lift up and move. Just a little light bulb holder. So we'll hook that guy up. And there we go. You can hear it ringing away. Get everything in frame. Hopefully you can see that. Everything is in frame. That light bulb is pretty bright. You'll probably hear the circuit ringing away. <clears throat> and while that's going off, we still have small amounts of wireless power. So you shouldn't be able to get that kind of power from a 9-volt uh, battery. Here's the small amount of wireless power I'm talking about. And we can unscrew this. Circuit will shut off, draw absolutely no power. It's almost perfect. It is the utmost efficient right now. And this bulb is very hot. Can run an LED with it. Blindingly bright. You could run banks of LEDs off that. And it won't ring because we're not saturating the uh, special core. So, if you want to order a ringer, you can uh, contact my email in the description below to order one. 150 bucks a ringer. Well, that's nicknamed the ringer or the pulsar circuit because of the um, special rod it's wound on. It has trace amounts of met glass in it. And we also still maintain a small amount of wireless power off this guy, which is crazy. And I haven't even showed uh, what can happen when you bring an earth connection in. Or you can you run a wire from a grounded metal plate and you bring it near this thing. You will get free wireless power from this thing. That was the LED. Probably can't even read that. 120 volt... 6 watt LED. Here's the AC bulb. 40 watt, 120 volt comes on at about half power. Mm, maybe a little under half power, but that's only because uh, we didn't add the ground yet, so that's why it's a little dim. And the best way to use this is use this power to recharge a big capacitor bank because the high frequency will do it so rapidly and yeah run incandescents run bulbs send the output through a special rectifier recharge a big capacitor bank with DC have fun pulse discharging it into battery banks then you can run inverters do anything you want, still maintain wireless power, everything is flexible, can move, 
Um, as you can see, I don't want to short anything out. Power source is just a little battery. So, I really should have that on a board where it can all move. Um, for those who doubt it, it's nothing to it really. It's except the two most exotic components are the transistor and the um, the rod being the most exotic. Full output on light and wireless power. And I'll see if I can demonstrate what bringing a ground connection near this thing will do. So here's a wire from my grounded heater. This connects to my heater that's grounded. And if you ground it, it will get brighter. Bulb gets brighter. Um, here's what the wireless power does as well. Here would be the free energy effect. So we grounded one end of this wireless receiver light. And when it contacts here, it will get extremely bright. There's your free energy coming from the ground. From the ground wire being sucked up out of it. Really bright right here. Put a rectifier between the ground wire and the uh, output coil of the circuit, and you have free energy here as well. So, yeah, that's that. Oh, yeah, it's very bright right there, and it will still do that even if you hook up the incandescent which we will end the video with you can run spotlights here searchlights all off a little 9 volt battery because of the transistor and the exotic material the rod is wound on so what makes this better than a regular jewel thief is the efficient transistor we're using and that rod is very important it's laced with met class I don't think anyone's ever built a utmost efficient jewel ringer using a met glass laced core so that's where the extreme efficiency comes from and again boom there's still your wireless power here so crazy right and that power is literally coming from an earth wire coming from my heater and the circuit There's your free energy right there. And again, the correct way to use this power is you would send this output that's going to the bulb through a very efficient rectifier, charge up a capacitor brink with it, and you pulse discharge it. You step it down to 12 volts and you pulse discharge it to charge a big battery and then run an inverter. <coughs> you can do whatever you want. And you bring in the ground connection, have even more free power. So, again, a little 9 volt battery should not be doing that so the excess power from this thing is coming from the ground wireless induction to the atmosphere are the ground and the fact it's wound on that special rod itself so should get a temperature gun measure the temperature off this thing it is hot and yeah love that Pretty bright light. <clears throat> so, that's it guys. The ringer fully demonstrated. The ringer, the pulsar. Selling one for 150 bucks. Uh, comes with everything you would see here. It come with a little 9 volt battery to run it. The leads. Not going to come with a light or a stand. Um, basically you pay 150 bucks for the labor of constructing it and the rod. Um... That's how it looks. Again, close look at it. Very cleanly made. 
<clears throat> and yeah, that's that. You're off running with this little tool. Um, I did sell all my stock of the exotic rods. I have more on the way from the company I get them from in China. So I'm waiting to get a whole other small stockpile of them from China, and then that'll be good. But uh, everyone who ordered will be getting theirs very soon, and this is exactly how it looks. Everyone who ordered should have theirs shipping out within one to three days. All orders should be filled within one to three days from this video being posted with fast shipping. So that's that. And yeah, that's the ringer, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and we will be starting construction, finally, on the bigger trans uh, Tesla coils, the bigger transmitters. This is going to be a $500 transmitter kit coming. And this is the pipe it will be wound on. So, 4-inch diameter, big stuff. And again, to end it, we'll hook up the incandescent. And to avoid that ringing sound, you don't saturate the core by putting too heavy of a load on here. Again, like I said, you use this output power to charge a big DC capacitor bank after it passes through a rectifier. And then you properly pulse discharge the capacitor bank into your load. You will never hear ringing. The circuit will be silent and you'll have massive power output. So... That's that, and thank you to everyone who subscribes, who likes, who supports the Patreon. And yeah, things are very interesting. So, this stuff's only going to get more advanced as the technology keeps improving every couple months. Get access to new components, more efficient transistors, more exotic rods. And thank you, everybody.